Okay, hi guys and welcome to the show and I thought I'd start this episode off with an unboxing. So, without further ado, got my little leak here. There it is. Yeah, it's a Tudor, but which Tudor have I got? But which Tudor is it? So, somebody actually said they really didn't like when I do a drum roll. So this is specially for you. Drum roll. Let's open her up. Oh, it's a black bay. It's a black bay. Oh, and it comes with the NATO strap. Look at that buckle. We've got the Tudor buckle there. Extra. And there it is. There it is. Very nice. So this is the first black bay. I mean, I've tried it on before, but this is actually the first black bay uh, on the channel. Now I bought this used. It's in immaculate condition. Let's, uh, there's that, the famous Tudor Rose of the, of the uh, dynasty. Let's pull it out, very nice. Give it a wind. And off it goes. Very nice indeed. Really does feel quite luxurious. I've, I've only worn them. I haven't actually uh, had a feel of the crown. But let's move the, um, that beautiful big snowflake hand. Gorgeous. Well, <laughs> that crown really does come out quite far. I presume take that off. Not a bad clasp. Let's put it on. Let's put it on. Not bad at all. Not bad at all. It's gorgeous. And I went for the red. Uh, I also went for this version because I wanted to chew the rolls on the dial. Um, yeah, I'm not too fussed about the in-house that more fuss about that aesthetic. Look at that dial. Gorgeous. Really impressed so far. Little box and papers, everything. Little tag. I got this really good deal, so because um, it was in such good condition, I just jumped on it really. So, first impressions. Well, it is a chunky piece, uh, but the, the finishing is beautiful. Absolutely stunning. Uh, got it in really good condition. Love that domed crystal there. It's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. And I'm going to put it on <laughs> the NATO strap. Of course I am. Uh, but yeah, over the moon. I've got a uh, Black Bay in the collection. So very, very happy indeed. It is very nicely done. The quality is there. Uh, that was my second purchase of the week. And that's pretty much it. So let's roll the intro and get on with today's episode. Sorry, I do apologize. A little late afternoon pick me up. Anyway, wristwatch check before we get into this. And I am wearing the Navi timer, my little Breitling Navi timer. Beautiful aviation watch. And it's on a one piece strap from Wrist Candy Watch Club. So, wristwatch check done. Uh, what are we talking about today? Well, it's got to be the ideology behind your watch collection, the very reason, the heart and soul of why. Uh, your collection is the way it is. And it's a very individual thing that differs greatly for everybody, basically. Uh, but it's something I've noticed that causes a lot of conflict within our community, within watch collecting, within watch fans especially. Uh, the different kind of motivations, the reasons why we choose pieces for our own collections. And it varies dramatically from person to person and it's something I always try and keep in the back of my mind when I'm reviewing somebody's collection a viewer sends their collection in for review I always look at the overarching theme I get a sense of that person and it's a big mistake I see other channels doing is when they apply their own ideology and they force it upon that viewers collection and it doesn't really uh, it's not compatible. We all collect for very different reasons. Now, if you're new to collecting, uh, this will come naturally over time. You will evolve your own taste. It depends on your age, 
uh, your preferences, your the needs uh, and why you collect. I noted down a few different kind of reasons, a few uh, differing ideologies that I've noticed in watch collections. You might even change the reason over time. You might start out uh, obsessed with resale value and, and, and monetary value and, and the strength of the, of the, the pieces, how they, they stack up over time and that might change you know you might suddenly find that you're obsessed about movement refinement and you might start collecting only prestigious movements or, or something it differs for everybody i've seen collections that are all color themed you know it was it was all entirely blue watches and there's nothing wrong with that if at the end of the day it's what makes you happy nothing is right or wrong but what is right and wrong is when you get watch channels that try and um, kind of uh, force their ideology, uh, their views onto yours, almost in a kind of discourteous uh, manner, as if you've made a mistake. No, 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 there is no mistakes, at, because at the end of the day, it's all about what makes you happy, and that's the most important thing, and that's why we collect, right? So let me kind of uh, explain my collecting theme or my collecting ideology, and I collect for fun. I know it sounds very simplistic, but at the end of the day, it's about enjoyment. I buy pieces that make me happy. It's as simple as that. The style may vary, they may come from different genres, aviation watches, dress watches, whatever. It's it's the fun of the piece that really attracts me. Other collectors value style. They they collect because they match a particular look, a particular uh they they have a, a taste in the design or uh, stylistically that they're after, it matches their kind of image, so to speak. Other people collect for status, probably the, <laughs> probably not the most, uh, I find it a, a bit kind of petit bourgeois, you know, uh, and, it, and same with value. Resale value is not that important to me. Uh, it is absolutely gospel to other collectors. If you do collect for value, then personally I think it's quite, quite limiting because you, you, you don't, you limit the spectrum and also it's quite a high-end thing. Other people collect uh, because of tools for the task, so to speak. You know, I've seen collections of divers where they'd have an SKX, a Breitling diver, like a Colt or something very kind of masculine and then maybe uh, a marathon perhaps, you know. And I love that because it's not about the value, it's about uh, really tooly, kind of robust, masculine pieces that serve a purpose. They're not there to be pretty. There is a theme running through that collection and I love that. And when I look at a collection, I try and get a sense of that person. And I try and think what would complement that. Rather than, you know, some of these channels, they look at that and they go, oh, get rid of the SKX, get rid of the marathon. Uh, get something more substantial, more prestigious. No, what? why? That's only if you care about value, you know? So you've got to keep this in mind. I really love it when collectors kind of don't care about that and they, they let go. Petit bourgeois obsessions with, with status and value because there's so much more out there. But I'm not saying it's wrong if you are into only collecting pieces that f as an investment, uh, then that's great, more power to you. Do it, go for it. At the same time, I'm not gonna force my ideology on your collection, so to speak. You know, if you're all about getting something where you don't lose money, then I will try and, you know, I'll pick that up from your collection. I will I will have, have guessed that because of the watches you, you choose, so to speak. So the ideology differs for all of us. You know, where you are in your life, your taste, and it evolves over time. Who knows where I'll be 10 years? I might only decide to collect dress watches. I mean, I don't ever think that will happen. My love for, for divers and watches like this will never, you know, I'll never tire of them. Maybe I will, you know, maybe it is related to age. So what is your overarching ideology? What is your the aim of your collection? What do you look for uh, in when you're buying watches? Is it just simple, the watch speaks to you and you don't care what is in your collection? Some collectors have a very complex ideology where it's an amalgamation of various things. They might only collect very sporty watches but um, have 
disregard for what's already in their collection. They might not, they might not even care. Uh, if so, you know, I'd really like to hear about that. What, what do you look for when buying a piece? Are you, I mean, I've seen collections where it was all about style. The movement was not important. It was all about the aesthetics. Um, you know, a lot of quartz. There's nothing wrong with it. We all collect for different reasons. I've seen collections where it was all about robustness. A G-Shock and a Rolex Seedwell, you know, really kind of aggressive tool watches. I think that's really, really cool. I love it when people figure out what that, why, the reason why they collect, what is their theme, what is their ideology. I think it's important to make that distinction that when we look at people's collections, for example, I posted on my Instagram my top five favorite watches. I had the Squale, the Saab, the Navi, uh, what else, the Speedy, and the SKX. And of course, I, got the, I get the, the usual comment, oh, get rid of the SKX and the Squale, get another icon in there. Well, to me, those are icons, and also it's not about value. I have different priorities. That person was thinking, from their ideology and it and it clashes but if we are aware of this out there as collectors if we all are aware that we have different tastes and priorities then we don't clash so much for me these five watches are all in just as important as each other uh, the value yeah the submariner is vastly more costly than the SKX, but I love them all the same and they're both as important. Status for me is not important. There are a lot of people that out there that status is important. They only buy them as status symbols. It's not a thing that's important to me. Uh, it might be crucially important to you, but what I respect is there's an honesty and that there's mutual respect between our different tastes and our different priorities and collecting. I think it's important to, to make that distinction and not to, to force our own ideologies onto other people because that's when the clash occurs. The politics and philosophy of watch collecting, it's very, very interesting. We all have different tastes, uh, but I think at the end of the day, it's important to respect each other's uh, tastes and uh, choices and not to belittle or, or kind of judge other people for their decisions. Some of my watches, sure, I might lose out if I decide to sell them, but for me it's the fun factor, it's the what I get back from the watch that's most important, that, that, that enjoyment. We shouldn't allow to be told by, especially by YouTubers, that what you're doing is wrong, or you should do this, or you should sell this and buy this, or you know that was a bad investment. A lot of people ask me for their advice, and I'll always give you suggestions you know you tell me oh I have this X amount to spend and I'm looking for a diver with this feature and that feature in this color and then I'll give you a suggestion but I don't think I'll ever say oh well, that's a mistake you bought this watch as a mistake I think that's kind of discourteous and rather disrespectful because at the end of the day these is very personal things you know the, the reasons why be, why we buy these things but anyway, guys, I'm going to leave it there. A very short uh, wristwatch talk episode. Uh, I really want to hear what are your philosophies, what are your ideologies, your aims, your themes in your collections. Uh, please share down below in the comments. I uh, always love to hear back from you guys. Thank you very, very much for watching. Please don't forget to give me a like if you enjoyed this video and found it useful. And as always, guys, I'll catch you in the next one. Okay, ciao.